Hi, I'm Umbrian Libris, and welcome to Art School. In this series, I'm going to talk about the art styles and techniques of Pokemon sprites and official art. And to do that, we're making a fake mon. We're going to take a page out of the Mystery Pokemon Design Challenge and use a couple of Pokedex entries as our starting point. These are the Dex entries my community gave me. It is nocturnal. It will get active after dusk. It is also a mischief maker. When this Pokemon spots anglers, it tugs on their fishing lines from beneath the surface and enjoys their consternation. Its entire body is covered in a slippery, slimy film. It feels horribly unpleasant to be touched by this Pokemon's hands. It is often mistaken for a human child. But don't get too attached to these Pokedex entries, I really am just using them as a starting point here. Now, back in the earliest days of Pokemon, a lot of designs were done in pixel art first, before anything else. Even the iconic Pikachu, according to its designer Atsuka Nishida. So, going into this, I did not do any sketches on paper. I'm using Photoshop, which is not an ideal program for pixel art, but it's what I have and it'll do the job. We're working with a square only 56 pixels on each side, so it's quite small, making it difficult to get a lot of detail in. My idea for the Fakemon was a river otter, because some species are nocturnal, they are quite playful, and they have a body shape that should be close enough to be mistaken for a child. But I struggled to find a pose that I liked, and that didn't look too much like Oshawa, Duwa, or Bruzel. I did a quadruped pose that I quite liked, and even went all the way and finished it, which is how I figured out the design of the Pokemon, but then I thought it looked too much like a husky and not enough like a child, so I went back to the drawing board and started over with a swimming position. The styles of the sprites between red, blue, and green and Pokemon Yellow are actually quite different. I'm going for something a bit more on the yellow side, where the shading is a little bit flatter, but the Pokemon have less wacky proportions and the poses are more dynamic. But the pixel art techniques are pretty much the same for both. Besides the size of the sprites, the other big challenge back then was that you only had four colors to work with. Black, white, and two shades of gray, because Gen 1 was made for the original Game Boy, which did not support color. So we have to try to communicate color with only two shades of gray. But now that I'm working on the final sprite, let's talk about the techniques that we have at our disposal. The first one you don't see a lot, but it can be very useful. When you have two overlapping objects in a light color, their distinction is quite simple because Pokemon sprites have thick outlines. But if the objects are dark, they blend in. And because of our limited palette, black objects don't have a blacker outline. If it's black, it's black. But what we can do here is outline the objects in a lighter color to give it the necessary contrast. On my sprite, it's how I give definition to the ear on the left, the arm that points towards the viewer, and the fold between its back and the tail. The next technique I want to show you is called anti-aliasing. It's a way of making your sprite look smoother. For example, this 10 by 10 pixel circle is super boxy, and it does not look good. But because this is a dark object on a light background, and up through Gen 2, every Pokemon sprite was seen on a white background, we can use our two shades of gray to make the edges appear less jagged. It's almost like making those pixels seem like they're not totally there. The lighter gray makes more of a difference than the darker gray, so we use them depending on how much smoother we need it to look. In my sprite, I used anti-aliasing in a couple different ways, like to smoothen out the curves of the back and tail, and to refine the white stripe down the side. Next up, we're going to do some shading, which can be challenging when you only have two shades of gray. You often end up with shading that looks too harsh, which is where dithering comes in. Dithering involves using a checkerboard pattern of pixels to trick your eye into interpreting it as an intermediate color. This isn't used super often in Pokemon sprites, especially not Gen 3 onwards, but it can be very effective, and I use it to add a bit more dimension to the highlights on the head and on the thigh. Just give me a moment here while I adjust the head a bit more, and there. Now we can talk about the final technique for today, which you may have already noticed me doing on the sprite itself, which is shading the outlines. This wasn't done super extensively in Gen 1, so we'll get more into it in later lessons, but here it is often also used as a way of anti-aliasing, since when done right, it can help the outline of lighter parts of the sprite both look smoother and look like they're in the light themselves, which makes the shading as a whole a bit more convincing. You can see how I do it on the bottom part of the head and of the tail. So the only thing left for us to do is color, except 
Like I said, the original Game Boy did not support color. But there was the Super Game Boy, an adapter for the Super NES that allowed you to play Game Boy games on the TV, and it had some default palettes that it would apply to the games. The Game Boy Color had a similar thing when you played OG Game Boy games. And the international release of Pokemon Yellow was actually enhanced to associate specific Game Boy Color palettes with specific sprites so that it didn't have to rely on the defaults. Since I made this sprite more in the style of yellow, I'm using a palette from yellow. The one I settled on is the same palette as Blastoise or Tentacruel. So there you have it. This is a single stage water type Pokemon. I'm calling it Water for now, which is a very Gen 1 style name. And it's also what I speculated Oshawott's English name might be back in the day. But I would love to hear your name suggestions in the comments. I'm sure you can come up with something better. And I hope this lesson was helpful to you. I would love to see any Gen 1 style sprites that you make. And if you think I missed anything, please put that in the comments as well. Next time, we'll make some vintage watercolor Sugimori art of water. <laughs> watercolor. Took you long enough. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, and thank you, of course, to my patrons, especially luxury patron Ethan Saffron. I'm Umbreon Libris. I'll see you in the next chapter. <laughs>